Welcome to Dr. Quentin Richmond's daily television broadcast, Road to Eternal Life. Dr. Richmond would like to share his books, his music, and a daily message with your heart. Join him on his journey on the road to eternal life. Glad you have joined me today. Jesus loves you. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noiseless pestilence. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror that flies by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. The Lord bless you as you listen to Eternal Life Ministry today. Thank you.
keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There's a race that I must run, there are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true, Lord Jesus, keep me true. There's a race that I must run, there are victories to be won. Give me power every hour to be true. My message titled today is, I Have Sinned. And my text is found in Luke 15, 18. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Now the younger son took his inheritance from his father and joined himself to a citizen of a foreign country and there wasted all his substance and riotous living. And he began to be in want, and the citizen of that foreign land sent him into the fields to feed swine. Now being a Jewish boy, you can imagine how he felt about feeding swine, because they don't believe in eating swine food, so they, he, they sent him to feed swine, so I'm sure he considers swine unclean, but he had to feed them. So remember that sometimes we have to do things that we don't want to do, but we have to do it. And he had to do it in order to live. So whatever you have to do to seek God and to live and to make sure of everything, it's best to do it now. And this son, he was in desperation considered filling his belly with the hus that the wine did eat that the swine did eat. And no one gave him, nor cared about his welfare and being. He became faint and troubled, and knew he was without God and his son. One thing here I'd like for you to realize, that this boy realized his need and he realized he needed to do something. So he said, I will go to my father, and I will ask of him, tell him, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. We need to realize that we're lost. This boy realized he was lost, and he decided to do something about it. Let us all decide to do something about it our condition as we have it now. Also, we need to examine ourselves to determine just what kind of life we're living and make a change to know God who can give us all things richly to enjoy. The young man knew he would perish with hunger and said, I will arise and go to my father and say unto him, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, make me as one of the hard servants. Now I believe the son's father had been looking for him day after day. I believe the father was out looking for him, and he was grieved because he knew his son was lost. Likewise, our heavenly father constantly wants us to come to the father's house and accept a better way of life through salvation of the soul. So this, this boy probably practiced what he was going to say to his father on the way. And we need to th consider our own salvation, 
what we will say, how we shall pray. Now the father was outside looking for his son. And when he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Oh, isn't this a beautiful picture? The father was outside watching for him. Your heavenly father is watching for you to come to him. Your heavenly father wants you. He's looking for you day after day, hoping you will come to the father's house where there is riches, where there is gold, where there are all things promised us forever. Let's hope that we will be like this son, that we will go to our father for the Father is looking for us and wants us to come unto him. The Son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no longer worthy to be called thy Son. Now through this action the Son has repented. There is a need for everyone to acknowledge his sin and repent. And we find in Job, the first chapter and the twelfth verse, he says, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And in Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. In acknowledging his son's repentance, the father took the best robe and put it on him. And he put a ring on his finger and he put shoes on his feet. And then he killed the fat calf. For his father declared, My son was dead, and now is alive. He was lost, and now is found. This is a great thing. The father showed his love. The heavenly father will show beyond your understanding, beyond any conceived idea how much he loves you and what he will do for you. Just as the Heavenly Father said to him, put a ring on his finger, put shoes on his feet, probably the Lord will give us the armor of God, give us a shield of faith, will give us a sword, will give us everything we need. And the Father saw the Son as in great need. He had no shoes, apparently, that was worth. And they put a ring on his finger, and they killed the fat calf. God Morris tells us, There is rejoicing by the angels in heaven for everyone that comes to the Father and is saved from death. The older son complained bitterly and said, That soon as thy son was come, which has devoured his living with harlots, and thou hast killed the fatted calf. The father said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and, and all that I have is thine. It was me that we should be and make merry and be glad. For this my your brother was dead and is alive again. And he was lost, but now he is found. In John 8, the third verse and 11th, there was a story about this woman that was taken in adultery. And the bunch of uh, Jewish people came and said, uh, trying Jesus, uh, seeing how he would cope with this. And they had stones in their hand, and they were ready to stone this woman. He said she was caught in the very act of adultery. And Jesus said unto them, He that is without sin, cast the first stone. Then he bent down and wrote on the ground, lifted himself up. They were still there. He bent down and wrote in the, on the ground a second time. He lifted himself up. They were still there. The third time he bent down and rose on the ground, when he lifted his head, lifted himself up, they threw down their stones and left 
everyone. No one was without sin. And Jesus said unto the woman, Where are your accusers? And she said, I have none. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I accuse thee. Go and sin no more. This shows the great compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. This shows the love that Jesus has for us all. And he will go with us and help us. Psalm 51, 3 and 4. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sins are ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. Now he declared here that he wasn't blaming nobody else for his sin, just himself. So we are responsible for our own sins. Other people may ridicule us. They may make fun of us. But when they do that to you, they do it to, to Jesus also. So just remember as David said, I have sinned and I have sinned only to thee. Against thee only have I sinned. And now in Jude one twenty one, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. God bless and keep you. Call upon him now. Don't carry your load of sin and sorrow and grief. Get rid of it. Come to God now. My pain of lust has filled my heart in forsaking God is my worst part Lord I need your glorious grace please help me God I repent in haste I am coming home coming home Lord I am coming home my soul is sick of sins I cannot bear Redeem me, Lord, with your loving care Coming home, coming home Lord, I'm coming home I'm persuaded that neither death or life can separate me from the love of Christ Neither angels nor power In the world to come Can keep me from praising Him, God's Son I am coming home Coming home Lord, I am coming home My soul is sick of sin I cannot bear Redeem me, Lord, with your loving care Coming home, coming home Lord, I'm coming home Thoughts of peace and love, that's true Happiness and peace I'm partaker in Christ For He is the way, the truth And eternal life I am coming home Coming home Lord, I am coming home My soul sick of sins I cannot bear Redeem me, Lord, with your loving care Coming home, coming home Lord, I'm coming home Lord, I'm coming
Are you almost persuaded? Today's a day. Almost persuaded. Now to believe. Almost persuaded. Christ to receive. Seems now some soul to save. Go, Spirit, go thy way. Some more convenient day on thee I'll call. Almost persuaded. Come, come now today. Almost persuaded. Don't turn away. Jesus invites you here. Angels are lingering near. Prayers rise from hearts so dear. Oh, wonder, come. Almost persuaded the harvest is past almost persuaded doom is coming at last almost cannot avail almost is just a fail sad sad that bitter wail almost but lost Jesus, lest I fail Help me, Lord That I might be A guiding light Please, God, help me Help my speaking season with salt In thy spirit help me walk Till thou taketh me away Help me serve Thee always Help me watch and help me pray Please, dear God, help me Help me, Lord, in my despair All my sorrows help me bear My refuge and my staff be Lord every day please God help me help my speaking season with salt in thy spirit help me walk till thou taketh me away help me serve thee always help me Pray, please, dear God, help me. Help me be a light that shines in dark places at all times to warn souls of eternity. They must prepare, please, God, help me. my speaking season with salt in thy spirit help me walk till thou taketh me away help me serve thee always help me watch and help me pray please dear God help me
isn't it hard? Help me, Lord, grace to impart. And those bound, help me set free by thy spirit. Please, God, help me. Help my speaking season with salt in thy spirit.